They drank more than other people. They wrote more. They got sick more, they got well more. They cursed more, they blessed more. And they helped a great deal more. They were an inspiration. On a wet March afternoon in 1960, a young, unknown Canadian poet was wandering the streets of London, looking for somewhere to relax, drink, and meet women. Somewhere cheap. Within days, Leonard Cohen was bound for the Greek island of Idra. George Johnston's glory days as a war correspondent and foreign editor were behind him. He and his writer wife, Charmian Clift, had settled on Idra five years earlier, having traded the security of successful newspaper careers in Australia and Britain for the vagaries of an isolated literary life. Their intent was to write great novels. But Johnston was ill, impotent, and battling to eke a living from his work. However, as presiding spirit of the island's shifting cast of foreign artists and writers, he was nothing if not hospitable. George and Charmian put young Len up in their spare room. And George arranged for him to give his very first concert for the cosmopolitan assortment of authors, painters and musicians who frequented the Katsikas grocery store, a group that included Marianne Jensen, wife of a Norwegian novelist. When the Japs took Rebel, I was sent to cover the New Guinea campaign. To Cohen, raised in an affluent Jewish family in suburban Montreal, his Australian hosts had a larger-than-life mythical quality. When Cohen decided to stay on Idra, they helped him set up house. They also introduced him to his muse. That's her, on the back cover of his 1969 album, Songs from a Room. By then, Cohen was the high priest of Pathos, the bird on the wire, the dirge master general. Johnston had finally achieved the success he so desperately craved, and Charmian had taken her own life. Tuberculosis, cigarettes and booze would soon do the same for George. Thank you.